we're back at Stuart and Clough, Burn. We're still in the midst of COVID-19, so Struan and I have got some social distancing going on here, and we'll come up this tiny wee burn, keeping the distance, but it's not hard to do. Uh, anyway, we came back here full of enthusiasm because, as many of you will know, over winter we, we stripped eggs from trout that were going to spawn in the lower stocking cloth where iron destroys the, the, the or any, any natural eggs fail. Uh, due to the, the iron enrichment and the, the anoxic conditions that, that develop in the gravel below the, the crust of iron that forms. Um, most people know that we are not huge fans of hatchery work and there has to be special circumstances that would allow us to intervene. And this was one. This, this, all the eggs we have reared were destined to fail had it not been for, for this. So Struan and I over winter reared I don't know, we, 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 we probably had something like that, um, I can't remember the exact number, we've got it all written down, and we stocked them in this burn, um, and we did that to try and help Glenbuck Loch, uh, where there is a, a wild trout population that we think is sort of in decline. Yeah, so we're disappointed today a little bit. Yeah, we're disappointed, because we'll come here to do an electrofishing survey which is prudent to do after stocking and, and requirement after after uh, stocking so we've got to monitor what we do so we came up here expecting to find quite a, a substantial number of juvenile trout fry in this burn and that's not been the case we've come up through over 100 metres of area where which has been right in the middle of where we've stopped and we found five, I think. Right? Mm -hmm. five, five fry and about three par. So those par will be resident fish that have been here. Um, and of course, if it's only five, there's no guarantee that those are stocked fish anyway. They no. might have been natural uh, recruitment taking place here. Yes, we did everything you know, as close to the book as you possibly can do, as low intervention as possible. And it hasn't, it hasn't worked. worked. There's, it hasn't worked. There's that, no two ways about it. That's the bottom it. line here. Um, but it yeah. is disappointing. Oh, you, it's disappointing. It's a lot of uh, time and effort and a little bit of finance went into this project and there's very, very little to show from it apart from lessons learned. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest, the one thing with hatcheries is everyone's got good intentions, there's no doubt about that. Everybody wants the right thing, they want more fish than they ever. Yeah. But it's beyond your control. You think you're doing the right thing and you think you can do the right thing think you're in control. Something's happened to you. We don't know why the fish have failed. Everything was right. It was everything we could do right by the book was done by the book. And it's failed. And there's no getting away from that. Here, I've got no problem sharing this because we could say, well, we'll say nothing more and we'll just say it was a success. But that's not what the trust's about. The trust's about being honest and upfront and trying to explain to anglers why it's much better to resolve the problems and the issues and start to intervene manually to, to breed fish. It just means it's back to the drawing board for us to find another solution that might work here. And I've got an idea. Um, uh, and we will follow that maybe next winter. But, yeah. Back to drawing board. Yeah, it's midgy, so. It's midgy. <laughs> we'll get out of here. But, yeah. We've just come downstream to a, a previous site that we had in the Staunton Cloth Burn that was quite prolific. Naturally quite prolific. Now we'll run through it quickly and we've got four par, probably two plus years old, maybe more, I don't know. Um, but I suspect there's something else going on here that's causing a problem because there was all the fry we put in, they're not there. Um, and there's no fry, we're not getting fry in any, any no, of the, the electrofission that we'd see satisfactory level of recruitment going on. What else could be wrong? That's the question we've got. There are only so many variables up here and you don't have that much, you don't have that many of them, so anthropogenic impacts going on. So the limited number that are, have got to be looked at, considered. Absolutely. Yeah. There's yeah. resident fish here and there's, there's no still no fry, young year, very few fry. Year, no. We need to look at this more, but it, certainly the hatchery didn't resolve it. It might have in a different year, but this year it didn't, and that's. It's why you electrofish. 
Why, yeah. If, if he didn't, if we weren't out here doing this today, he'd have no idea that there's a, a potential problem, there is a problem. We'd uh, like to try and solve the problem here, whatever it is. And first, we must get to the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. um, our intervention hasn't worked, but there's obviously something else underlying here that's wrong, and we've got to get it. So, yeah. Next call, we'll be SEPA ecologists and SEPA fish specialists, see what they can come up with to help us. Hopefully we can get a bit of funding to carry on something here to, to improve this, because it's such a shame. This is the very source, this is the true source of the river here. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. We'll get back to you with more details later if we get any.